The vintage garage glad you're here we have another full show today first we need to install the fire extinguisher system in the Royale RP2 that we've been restoring after that we need to remove the gas tank from the car we'll box it up and send it to fuel safe and they'll manufacture a modern replacement fuel cell for the car after that we need to load the Titan Mark 6 into the transporter that's the car that we've entered at the HSR Savannah Historics at Roebling Road next week so we have a lot to do. We have another full show. Glad you're here. We ordered this five pound Halon Race Tech fire extinguisher system from Transatlantic Racing. And now we're going to install it in the Royale RP2 that we've been restoring. Before we do, let's look inside the box and see what comes with the kit. First out of the box is a nice set of decals. The large E decal is used to mark the location of the release handle for the fire extinguisher system. The triangular decal is used to mark the location of the master on-off switch for the car. And we'll use one of these other decals that indicate the rotation of that switch. We'll set that aside and we'll install that on the car uh, when we install the graphics on the car later in the project. Next we have many feet of plastic covered aluminum tubing and that's used to carry the halon to various points in the car. We'll be using that in the project. We also have the release handle and its cable. We'll mount that in the dashboard and that's what uh, will be used to release the halon in case of a fire. Then we have the main bottle itself. It has an aluminum mounting bracket it has a gauge that indicates whether it's full or discharged, and right now it's full. It also has a handle that will hook to the remote cable release. <laughs> Lastly, there's a bag of small parts, including two nozzles and a T-connector and some other fittings. We'll put one nozzle in the engine bay of the car, and one nozzle in the cockpit to protect the driver. So that's the kit. Let's get started installing that on the car. We're now over at the Royale RP2. The first step to installing the fire extinguisher system is to find a suitable mounting point for the five pound halon container. It's quite large and quite fat and it's tough to find a place on the car. The body on the Royale RP2 forms a straight line between the top of the dashboard and this front firewall. So if we use a long level to represent the body, we found that uh, there's room right above the driver's knees for the fire bottle. We can mount it there and there'll still be clearance for the body across the top of the car. The system comes with its own mounting bracket. If we remove the clamps that hold the fire bottle, take it off and set it aside, it 
we can get to the mounting bracket. The mounting bracket has four holes in it, and by carefully positioning the bracket, we can line up those four holes above four of the chassis tubes. We'll mark the location on the chassis where we need to drill holes to line up with the bracket. Then we'll set the bracket off to the side and we'll drill these four holes. Now we'll use a center punch and a ball peen hammer to mark the location of the holes we're going to need to drill. We've mounted a 3 16 drill bit and a 3 8 hand drill and we'll use that to drill our holes. We're going to mount the bracket with four aircraft grade AM 316 bolts and washers. If we've drilled our holes right, they'll line up exactly with the holes in the chassis. We started our nuts by hand. Now we've got a 3 8 box wrench on the bottom and a 3 8 socket on the top, and we'll tighten them in place. We're using aircraft grade nylon lock washers on the bottom side. And that's the last one. So let's mount the fire bottle and see how it's going to fit. Okay, we now have a nice firm mounting to our fire bottle. Let's check with our straight edge again across the body and make sure that we still have clearance for it. And we do. There's still a area under here that's going to provide clearance to the body. We've done a nice job of mounting the bottle. Now we have to hook up the lines that carry the halon to the nozzles and mount the nozzles in both the cockpit and the engine bay. The kit comes with a long length of aluminum tube all coiled up. We'll start by straightening out the tube to get a nice straight piece to start. The tube is covered with a plastic coating, but it's aluminum under the plastic. We've cut one piece of the aluminum tube to this length, and we bent it in a U shape. The tube just pushes into the fittings on the system, and once they're in, it's difficult to get them out. It's a push fit and it holds it in. We route the other end of the tube back to the area above the driver's feet, where we'll push on this T-fitting. We've now cut a small length of aluminum tube. We're going to push that into the nozzle that's going to be above the driver's lap. And once we push that in, it's nice and firm and can't come out. We'll plug that into the T that runs from the fire bottle. When the halon in the fire bottle is released, the halon will travel out this tube to the T. Part of the halon will go up the T out this nozzle above the driver's lap. The rest of the halon will go out this end of the T to the rear of the car. So next we're going to run a line from here to the rear of the car and put a nozzle in the engine bay. We've now straightened and unrolled about a five foot long section of the aluminum tube. And we measured it to be the right length to reach to the rear of the car. So we'll thread that from the rear of the car up through the chassis 
and we'll connect into that T. You want to make sure that the dashboard wiring isn't in the way. So we'll push that into the T. Okay, and that's firmly seated. We'll use tie wraps to mount the T to the chassis. And we'll put a tie wrap on either side of the T. We've now finished the installation of the front nozzle. We have it tied down nice and it's pointed at the driver's slap and feet area. Now we're going to continue with the tie wraps, tying the aluminum tube to the chassis and moving to the rear of the car. We'll put one tie wrap up front here, right behind the dashboard and near the gear shift to make sure that the tubing doesn't foul in the operation of the gear shift lever. So it's in good shape. We'll put another tie wrap here on the side to hold the aluminum tube on the underside of that chassis tube. We'll cut it off there and we'll move the loose end around to the inside. We have one more to do, and that's right here. We've routed the tube so that it terminates right below the carburetor on the car. We'll cut that off and spin that around. Lastly, we need to install the nozzle that goes under the carburetor onto the end of the tube. In order to do that, all we need to do is push it onto the tube. Once on the tube, it stays. We've now finished installing both nozzles that connect the aluminum tube to the Halon fire bottle. We've installed the nozzle in the rear underneath the carburetor. We've installed the nozzle in the front that points to the driver's lap. We're almost done with the installation. Now we have to install a remote T-handle in the dashboard of the car that gives the driver control to release the halon in the event of fire. So let's do that next. We've moved over to the other side of the car now. This hole in the dashboard is the hole that we're going to use to mount the T-handle that releases the fire bottle in the event of a fire. This is the T-handle here. It's connected to a release cable cable is way too long, they intentionally give you more than you need. So we'll have to measure it to length and cut it off at the right length. The outer cable of the release cable needs to be long enough to run from the dashboard over to this hole on the fire bottle. The inner cable needs to be a bit longer, it needs to run out to about here so that there's enough room to fasten a clamp on the end. We'll tighten that down with a 9 16 wrench. The shaft of the T handle is slotted so that it's positional. Once tight, the T-handle can't turn more than that, so we can keep it in a nice vertical alignment. Now we need to route the cable over to the fire bottle. We need to install this little brass fitting right on the end of the handle to the fire bottle. And then we pass the inner and outer cable through that fitting. We moved around to the other side of the car now. Again, the outer cable stops at this brass fitting that we just got through installing. But the inner cable continues along through this hole in this second handle. When this handle is pulled, the halon is released from the fire bottle. We've also put a cable stop on the inner cable. That comes with the kit, and we need to tighten that down. That stop keeps the cable from pulling out of the handle 
when the T-handle on the dashboard is pulled. We've also put a piece of shrink tubing on the cable and we use that to keep the cable from unraveling. We just like to have a nice neat job. So before we cut the cable, we'll heat the shrink tubing so it's nice and tight. And we just do that with a match. Okay, that looks pretty good. And we're done! We've now firmly affixed the inner cable to the release handle of the fire bottle and it can't come out. We've also neatly dressed the end of the cable so that it can't unravel. We're real pleased with the job. It came out great. Now we need to get to work on the gas tank in the car. The next project on the Royale RP2 is to remove the original gas tank from the car. We want to box it up and send it to Fuel Safe in California where they'll duplicate it with a modern fuel cell. It's not a big job and it won't take very long, but it's something that has to be done. First step is to remove the seat in the car. We'll just pull the belts out of the way. The seat isn't even fastened in, so it comes out pretty easily. We'll unfasten the fuel line that goes to the original gas tank and set it off to the side. The original gas tank is a triangular piece fabricated out of aluminum. That's a pretty tight fit in the car. We put the body back on the Royale RP2 and it fit nicely. There's good clearance between the top of the fire extinguisher bottle and the body of the car. So we're real pleased with the job, it came out great. We still need to install a fuel cell when it comes in from Fuel Safe, and then the last step is to install the graphics on the car. We'll cut numbers out of vinyl and put them in the number bolts on both sides and on the nose of the car. We'll also install the e-decal near the fire extinguisher handle and the main on-off switch marking decal right here near the on-off switch for the car. But right now we need to switch gears for a bit. We need to load the Titan Mark VI into the transporter for the race at Savannah. It's a beautiful morning at Vintage Garage and it's time to load the A-Van with all our gear and tools. After we get everything loaded, we'll load the Titan Mark VI. We have to do that last because once it's in the A-Van, there isn't much room to move around and load things. We have a checklist that we use. This checklist has been produced over a number of years of experience. We add things to it and rarely take things off of it. It just seems to grow with time. First thing is, is we start the battery charger going on all the auxiliary batteries in the A-Van. We like to get the battery for the TV all charged up ahead of time and make sure we have the auxiliary battery for the race car fully charged. We put clean sheets on the bed and it's ready to go. We've washed our driver's uniform and we keep all our driver's equipment in this garment bag and so that we make sure that we're not missing anything when we get to the races. We check over everything pretty carefully. If you get to the races and you don't have your helmet or your uh, fireproof socks or your shoes or gloves, uh, you come a long way for nothing. So uh, it's important to make sure that all the gear is here. We run through the checklist make sure that we have our shoes, we have our gloves, we have our arm restraints, and we also pack Einstein's gear. We have a spare leash for him. We have his favorite rubber toy that he likes to have along. We make sure that's packed. 
once we're sure all our gear is here, we close up the garment bag, and then when we go to tech inspection, we can just uh, bring the garment bag and also our race helmet, which we keep up here. We take those two items and we know that we have everything for tech inspection. We try not to uh, take items out of our part shelf so we don't have to load it every time, but um, we needed our box of aircraft nuts for the Royale project, so we have to remember to load them back in the part shelf, and also our box of AN washers and nuts. We have spare batteries of every size. We also have our spark plugs, spare ignition equipment, the remote for the TV, all our race hats, and generally a lot of our spare parts of a small nature up here. So we can check off those items. We always bring a gallon of lacquer thinner, which we found is handy for cleaning things. And we have to remember to put our pop rivet gun back. We use that on the Royale. So we can check that off the list. We had a cable pull. Have plenty of brake fluid. We've got the jack for the truck. Plenty of paper towels, spare gas for the truck. We had the portal power, our 12 volt air compressor, our generator, extension cords, battery charger extra graphics, lawn chairs. We need to get the floor jack now and get that loaded. One of the components we're most careful with on the A-Van is the tires. Uh, we put the best tires money can buy on the rig since uh, we go pretty fast and we're heavily loaded. We have uh, Dunlop radial tires on it and we run uh, 60 pounds of pressure in every tire. And uh, we always check those before every time we take the A-Van out. In the past we had a lot of trouble putting air in the outside tire on both rear duals. And uh, so we built this tool. We got a uh, regular quick release nipple on this end with a brass tube and an air chuck on this end. And the key is we finally got the right angle here so that we could get past the wheel and up to the uh, up to the tire valve. Once we got that tool built, then the job became a lot easier. We haven't put a automatic uh, tire gauge in it though. That's the next step that would make it that much better. We change the oil in the eight van between every other race. And this is the time when we didn't change the oil between races, so we need to check it before we start out. The A-Van's on a little bit of a hill, so we have to make allowances for that. Showing down about half a quart, but uh, that's because it's on the hill and the uh, dipstick is in the back of the sump and the truck is nose down. So I think the oil is okay. We'll also add a little windshield washer fluid and I can see the level in the radiator looks good. We also check the brake fluid every trip. Brakes in this truck are real good and it doesn't seem to leak. That fluid's still okay in both chambers. So that's it. The truck is uh, ready for the trip. Time to uh, load the Titan Mark VI. We've wired up a remote control for the winch in the A-Van. That allows us to steer the car if we need to while we're loading it. Now we usually go up to the winch and 
do the rest of the loading from the front of the A-van so that we can position the car and see how it's loading in the front. We have the car chained down with a heavy chain so that it can't fall out the back. And then we'll put a couple of tie downs um, on the rear of the car that hopefully will keep it from flying forward if we hit something with the A-van. The next step now is to load the uh, jet flux system. We usually bring that along in case any of our friends uh, crash and need repairs. We can fix them up with the jet fluxer. Well, we finished our projects for this week at Vintage Garage. It's a beautiful September day. So we've got the Triumph 650 all cleaned up. It's ready to go. I think we're going to go for a ride. We had a great day today. Thanks for coming. Glad you were here. First, we installed the fire system in the Royal RP2. That was an important job. It was a lot of fun, and it came out great. Next, we finished the small job of removing the gas tank from the Royal RP2. We'll box it up and send it to Fuel Safe this week. Our show next week will originate from Roebling Road near Savannah, Georgia. We've entered the HSR Savannah Historics and we look forward to getting some good in car video, interviews with some of the other drivers and crews, and a lot of shots from around the paddock. Until next week, keep the shiny side up. We'll see you in a week from Savannah. information about any of the projects we've worked on today, please visit our website at www.vintagegarage.com. There's a link to our email address on the website. Please email us. We'd like to hear from you. Till next time, keep the shiny side up. Thanks for coming. See you next week. <laughs>